there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make this mini Valentine canvas decoration. How cute would this look sitting in the middle of your table next to a dish of Valentine's candy or sitting on your mantle or any shelf with a little red berry garland next to it? I just think it's so fun pretty bright and just so valentiney and don't you like just nice little bright poppy projects in the middle of winter i know i do now we're going to be using a mini canvas here this is from artisan it comes with a little easels sometimes you can find these at the dollar store too so check there if you don't want to buy a whole box because i think you get a box of 14 when you order them so you know if you just need one check out the dollar store they often have them and i'm using acrylic paint markers this brand is by uh, chocola they have chalk markers and also acrylic these are the acrylic ones and they are the 0.3 millimeter, the three millimeter tip, I believe. They're not the hard plastic ones. They're the kind of the small felt tip ones if you're uh, trying to find something to compare. But you can also use any acrylic paints you already have, any acrylic craft paints and a little palette. It's gonna work just fine. Get your little brushes out. It's gonna be great. So these are four inch by four inch canvases. I do know you can find canvases that are smaller than that. And I think this with the paint pens would be such a fun little project to do with your kids. Or if you do, um, if you have a scouting group or something like that, and you just want a fun little arty, arty project that's not gonna be real messy. These pens and mini canvases is just a fun way to go about it. I also like the mini easels because I think if a kid made a little mini canvas, they could always like cut down cardboard or a thick paper into small four by four canvases or papers and do little paintings like that to put on there. So I think it's cute. And also if your, um, if your kids have like Barbie dolls, things like that, that would just be such a perfect little Barbie doll size easel. Anyway, I digress. So I sketched on the, these strawberries with a paint pen and now I'm just filling in one that's kind of, kind of with brown to indicate the chocolate coating on our Valentine strawberries. Of course you could do conversation hearts, you could do any other little motif you like, any other candy would be really cute. And then I'm using a paintbrush just to blend a couple different shades of brown together. I find that if I'm filling in a larger area, honestly I would prefer to have paint and a brush but if you color in with the paint pens, you can blend with a regular old uh, acrylic paintbrush. Just don't forget to clean the brush when you're done with it. Now for the other strawberry, it's actually a sliced in half strawberry. So you get to see the center of the fruit, which I think is really appealing, especially when you have that little heart shape hull in the center, which is just, you know, so Valentine-y, I think. And I'm using a couple shades of red to kind of get that, um, the uh, the look of the flesh. And then I'm using some pink to just kind of zigzag color in there, streak in towards the center to get that, um, you know, kind of striated look that a strawberry has. If you have strawberries in your fridge, cut one open, take a look, see how, you know, the, the colors go. This is a nice juicy one. Sometimes you get strawberries and they're just really kind of white in the center because they didn't ripen um, at the farm. They ripened at the grocery store. Uh, that's why if you grow strawberries at home, they're always so much more juicy looking and better tasting because, you know, they you let them ripen on the vine. So now I digress. We're going on to the candy coating here on the strawberry. And when you put that white chocolate drizzle down, you want to curve it so that it's following the contour of the strawberry, which is really kind of a cone or teardrop shape. That's gonna make it look more three-dimensional. And then just use a yellow paint pen to add strawberry, the little strawberry seeds on the outside. The nice thing about paint pens is that they're generally formulated to be opaque. So um, even if you did the base coating with like your regular brush and acrylic paint, you could go over it with the paint pens and it's gonna stand on top of it because they're meant to be opaque. That drawback to opaque paints though is that sometimes you can't get those really deep, deep, rich reds because those tend to be more transparent colors. But if you want to go ahead and like maybe base coat a bunch of canvases or in, in like sketch in shapes or something because you want to do this with a project, do this project with a bunch of small children, you could totally do that because the paint pens will show up on top of a base coated canvas which is kind of nice. That's why they're so nice for like, if you like to do friendship rocks and things like that, or paint on, you know, uh, clothing caps or sneakers, things like that. They're just a real fun medium to use with kids. Now I did want to do a very quick review on these markers, uh, the Chocola paint pens. Um, I think they're, you know, pretty good for the price. They're under a dollar a piece and they come in sets of 20 and 40, I believe. And they also have an extra fine version, which I haven't used. Now I'm, I typically use Posca pens, which are kind of the gold standard. So not really fair to compare those to Poscas because they're not quite as good, but they're also not quite as expensive. But I've also tried some other budget brands that perform a little bit better than these. So I just wanted to mention that, um, for instance, I find the 
parku ones be, perform a little bit better. They start easier, they flow easier, but these aren't bad for the price. I just wanted to kind of put that out there in case you were trying to decide between a few different brands. I haven't tried them all. I don't use paint pens too much, and I typically don't use them for an entire artwork. I tend to use them as highlights on top of my marker art. So, um, People with different needs might have different experiences with the markers. You can always check reviews online uh, before you buy to get some other opinions because I don't use paint markers that often. So um, I'm kind of hesitant to review things that I don't use a lot. Um, but as far as using them for accents, I think they're great for that. But I also think that there are other brands that perform a little bit better that are ready to go a little easier when you pick them up and don't require so much... Um, fussing to get them started. Now for the background, I went in with a dark teal around the strawberries and then I blended it out with a lighter kind of tealy aqua color as it went around to the edges. And then I finished up with a really, really pale aqua color right at the edges and I left the, the sides of the canvas white. Now you could paint the sides of the canvas as well. That's completely up to you because it will show as it's sitting on its little display easel or you could even write like a, a little poem around the edges. There's really a lot you can do with little projects like this. I think it's so fun. Now you will notice that the white chocolate there needed a second coat, so I'm doing that with a marker and I'm adding little stipply dots to give the, the um, impression of things being kind of glossy and wet on the inside of the strawberry. And there you have it. This was a fun little project. I love the teal and the red together. They're such a pretty combination and I hope you give it a try whether you're using markers or your regular paints and paint brushes. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting!